Welcome to Harley Street Beauty, the show that gives you all the advice you need to look and feel gorgeous. Here's what's coming up on today's show. We go behind the scenes of a PIP implant removal. It's a possibility that one may be leaking. We head to Inanch, London to find out how to take out hair extensions safely. If you're going to pay to have extensions done professionally, then you should pay to have them professionally removed. We get the lowdown on the complex world of fillers and injectables. They are pretty safe if, if you use them you know, correctly. One of the biggest issues in the world of cosmetic surgery this year has undoubtedly centred around the safety of PIP implants. A couple of years ago, Stephanie had PIP implants put in to boost her confidence, but now she's worried that one of her implants may be leaking. We headed to Harley Street Plastic Surgery to talk to Professor James Frame about a solution for this potentially risky problem. Yeah, this young um, lady's called Stephanie, and she's a young lady who had PI implants put in a couple of years ago uh, by Holly Medical Group. But it seems as though um, PI implants were made with an impure silicone, which means there are contaminants, which means that we don't quite know what they are and, and what they can cause over a, a period of anything up to about 10 years. I thought it's definitely not what I've got because I went to the best, but then I found out they had, and it I was angry, really angry. <laughs> These implants only cost £60 apparently, so I, I, I was more angry with what did they do with the rest of the money. Every time we try and ring them, like it was the same after the surgery, like the phone just rings and rings and rings and nobody answers. Um, but then they had like an answer phone message saying to ring this other number which was a helpline and then they like leave your details and they get back to you, but nobody did. She's come in uh, to us really um, concerned about uh, the implants and whether or not to exchange them uh, urgently or sort of semi-urgently. As soon as I found out that they were PIP, I wanted to get them changed. I think it's fair to say these implants um, have a, um, a mixed history. Sometimes they're rupturing very early, sometimes they're rupturing late. The advice at the moment is, um, in the cool light of day, to take these implants out, exchange them for the implants which you think will probably give her a better result. Sometimes it can take up to double the amount of time for a simple, than a simple augmentation. And double the time because you're not only going to take the implant out with care, you've got to consider what to do with the capsule, which is the bit that the implant um, causes the body to make. Uh, and if that implant's got contaminated with the uh, contents of that implant, then really that's got to be taken out uh, if possible. It's a possibility that one may be leaking because my lymph nodes are swollen. So, you know, it was better to get them out sooner rather than later. We'll find out how Stephanie's operation went a little later in the show. We always hear about celebrities using fillers and injectables and understandably, brides to be are attracted to similar treatments for their big day which is why we've enlisted the help of Professor James Frame to give us the lowdown. But before we head over to Harley Street, we headed out and about to find out what you thought. You can see how it does attract people and, and, and how people and why people want it done. If you've ever been to Miami and walked along Ocean Drive and you see the bizarrest sights, that it's not human. So, you know, I think it's easier to just let nature and gravity take its course. Anybody who feels that you need to change and, and in medicine allow it, and uh, it's to complete, completely fine because it's your, for yourself. You're yeah, as first, long as you do it You're the first person you need to think about yourself. And as long as you do it supervisor, of course, with special doctors who know what they're doing, because otherwise Supervised, it will yeah. be the other effect. <laughs> Fillers is a sort of somewhat generic name. It, it sort of means different things to different people. But the fillers that we're talking about really are means by which we can fill in a crease or a fold in a certain part of a patient's body. Sometimes it's also dips, so depressed areas we can actually use these fillers for. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important though you, you understand the sort of distance from the skin edge that you're injecting them. So sometimes you inject them right within the skin, right near the surface, but equally you can inject a product right down onto the bone and it depends what you're trying to achieve. Do you want the person for example to be able to see and feel a line in skin or do you want them just to expand out the, the skin to make the wrinkle look less? 
over the last 40 odd years, things have changed from a situation where perhaps we just used fat as, as a filler. We used to move it as a big block of tissue and just put it in the space we wanted it to sort of more refined methods of moving just collagen, which is a part of actually, it used to be part of a, a cow's skin. They used to mince it all up and make what we call collagen, which was injected and by and large that didn't really last. And if anything, there was a chance of setting up some sort of tissue reaction because it's a foreign protein going into the human body. And the body doesn't really like that very much, certainly on repeated injections. So then people went into silicone injections, which we now know is a, a disaster because in a very large percentage of people, the body reacts to the silicone to produce really quite bad scars. And, and so it's, result, it's gone now into things like hyaluronic acids, which are made in a laboratory and chemically they're identical actually to a normal ground substance which is what occurs around the cells of human beings. So chemically identical to the tissues we already have uh, and which we're injecting and, and the idea of these fillers are they sort of attract a bit of water so you, you get like a slight plumpness and shine to your skin as well. The, the biggest danger you know one would highlight would be it's very easy to inject into an artery for example and that artery would then carry the, the product you've injected to its end organ. Now it may be the skin, it may actually be the eye. So one could end up being blind or one for example could lose part of the nose. So one really has to be aware of that and therefore from the regulatory point of view then clearly there has to be a distinction in, in who is qualified to do it and who not. They are pretty safe if, if you use them uh, correctly. And there are times, for example, when um, you know, in development problems, a, a person's face may be completely half the size or so of the other mm -hmm. side, and you can actually build up a face with these filters, and, and it's like moulding and shaping. And, and I guess in the ideal world, you'd be something like a plastic surgeon who seems to be able to see that, the conceptual sign of, mm -hmm. of asymmetry and trying to correct it. It's very easy to sort of go to people who have got a good reputation. So if one of your friends has already had it and you'd like that result, then Generally speaking, it's not an unsafe practice to go to see them. Look at the guy's qualification or the lady's qualification, because more and more we're, we're seeing beauticians and people that really have never experienced putting a needle or a needle onto a syringe or actually ever felt the pressure of the, of the needle that's introducing a substance into sort of another person. I mean, it's a bit like asking me to pluck your eyebrows. I wouldn't have a clue even where to start, and I'd make an absolute mess of it. And there is a learning curve, and I get better at it. But are you, is it right that somebody's got to be the guinea pig while I'm going through that little phase? Earlier in the series, I went to Top Celebrity Salon in Anch, London to have my own hair extensions fitted. I was incredibly pleased with the results, but to keep my hair as healthy as possible, I now need to have the hair extensions removed. I headed back to in Anch, London to find out how they carry out this process. If you're going to pay to have extensions done professionally, then you should pay to have them professionally removed. And hence why if you remove them properly and professionally, you'll get no damage. Also, not leaving it too long. So it's not just, obviously the removal is important, but some people get them tangled. So the maintenance is very important. So we give all our clients a little maintenance booklet. So it shows them how to maintain the extensions, how to keep them separate from one another. If they become tangled and you then go and remove and the bonds are all stuck together, it's going to take you longer to remove, it's going to take the hairdresser longer to remove them and again rip the hair if they're all tangled. So it's, it's three things in one basically, application is important, maintenance is important and removal is important, then you get no damage whatsoever. We have um, a removal solution by Great Lengths, um, their own um, pliers we call them. Great Lengths removal solution doesn't actually have acetone in it as glue methods need acetone. So if we get a client that comes to us for removal and it's glue, we can't actually remove it with the Great Lengths removal solution because we need acetone. So then we use it, our beautician's acetone, which isn't as safe on the hair. So we always say, do your research, use keratin bonds over glue bonds, um, just because they come out simpler as well without causing damage. If you apply the removal solution on the actual bonds of where the keratin was is, 
you apply on those bonds and you just clamp with your clamps and it dissolves and then the hair just slips out, making it a lot safer than using glue methods. And we always recommend to clients, don't remove them yourself because you end up ripping your hair out. I think it's usually clients that, clients that have been away for a long period and some some of the hair gets tangled or for whatever, whatever reason they give us is they do try to remove them because they don't want to be sitting in your chair for an extra hour, especially if they're having removal and application on the same day. They think, oh, instead of sitting in the salon for a day, for an hour, sorry, not a day, it may, ends up being a day if they're doing colour extensions removal. So what they do is they try and take them out while watching TV the night before. So that's always a disaster. You end up with little bald patches because they've ripped their hair out basically so we always recommend don't buy removal solutions from other places. Salons by right should not sell the removal solution anyway but you do get the odd company that sells to their client because the client says I can't come in to remove them but we recommend you have it removed professionally. Obviously we love them to come back to us because a lot of the time it, it's so addictive that when you're when you're going to remove them you automatically are having the application on the same day anyway so you do tend to go back to the same hairdresser but for any reason if you're abroad and you can't come in or anything like that you have to ring up and find out what salons actually do extensions because then they'll be able to remove them safely if they're not doing extensions, they're not going to know how to remove them. I've now had my hair extensions removed. I can't believe how easy that was and how soft my hair feels now. So it really is so important that when you are having hair extensions that you come back to your hairdresser and they remove it safely because my hair feels amazing. It doesn't feel like I've had hair extensions in for four months, that's for sure. Welcome back to Harley Street Beauty, the show that helps you look and feel amazing. Coming up on Harley Street Beauty, we join Dr. James Frame as he performs a PIP implant removal operation. It's not about money because money's just money, isn't it? You can't put a price on your health. I head back to Aviva Cosmetic Dentistry for my final Invisalign treatment. I cannot believe how straight they are. Earlier in the show, we followed Stephanie into the operating room as she was about to undergo a PIP implant removal surgery. In addition to the removal, Professor James Frame was also planning to reinsert a much safer type of implant. Let's head over to theatre to see how Stephanie got on. Now, in Stephanie's case, the implant um, was intact, the shell was rather thin, but it was really heavily stuck down to the back of her muscle. Is it, sorry, is it coming out? Now, the good news is this implant hasn't ruptured. Right? So we're looking at an implant that's probably intact, but it's had that horrible wet on. juice around it. It's, it's sticky, slimy. You, it looks like you could run a, an engine with it. This is a, a current vogue for surgeons to put these implants behind the muscle. It actually makes it incredibly difficult to totally strip the capsule without putting considerable risk to her. So what I've done is I've left um, the upper part of the capsule which is stuck on the muscle and inserted a new polyurethrane implant which has the best record regarding uh, complications post-operatively. And this implant is a much better quality than the one she just had taken out. Everybody I know has um, joined this thing, it's like a support forum and I think loads of people, it helps to have other people going through the same thing but I know that I'm a lot more fortunate and then a lot of other girls and so I've just got to think about that, can't feel sorry for myself. I put some anaesthetic on the uh, implant so she won't be in much pain, there'll be a bit of discomfort but you know, the implant was in and around her muscle so that always causes a bit more pain than if we go in front of the muscle. Uh, if we can get control of the pain she'll be moving very quickly, first two weeks in a bra and not really doing very much, uh, the next two weeks uh, doing more um, but not yet in the gym probably six to eight big weeks before she gets into high impacts of aerobics and things. Anyone that says that they're going to sue them or go for a legal battle by themselves with the, with the big corporations, it's pointless. So I think it is good that there's all these girls come together on Facebook and everything and you know they're doing their marches up at Harley Street and everything. Uh, she'll be seen on a weekly basis to be sure she hasn't got a haematoma or infection. And then usually I see the girls around about the three-month mark just to make sure everything's settling down well. And the vast majority, in fact, 
it's very rarely we get into a situation we have to consider doing anything else. I think there will be some sort of compensation for everybody, but I think it will take a long, long time. So I will keep involved in it, but at the moment the priority is my health and the other girls' health as well. So we'll see what happens. It's not about the money at all, it's purely about health and the fact that, you know, I need new ones. It's, that's the main thing on the agenda, it's, it's not about money because money's just money, isn't it? You can't put a price on your health. Over the course of the series, I've been undergoing an Invisalign treatment at Aviva Cosmetic Dentistry with Dr. Julian Kaplan. I've now come to the end of my course, which means I'm going back to Julian for my final checkup. But before we find out if I got the results I was looking for, let's see what you thought about this type of treatment. No, I, I think now I would just deal with it. I'm not really as I'm not as bored as I was when I was younger. I've been in Invisalign treatment just under a year. I thought this was really surprising. I thought it was going to be much longer. Rather than people altering their bodies to suit the image that they have of themselves in their head, they should probably think about why they have this certain image of themselves in their head and deal with that rather than deal with the physical problem. If they're insecure about the way they look and they've got the money to do it, then go for it. I'm so excited to say that I'm back at Aviva Cosmetic Dentistry for the very final checkup with Julian after a 10 month course of Invisalign and Visible Braces. So now we're going to find out if anything else needs to be done. I can't wait. So Naomi came to see me and uh, she was concerned about her teeth and, and as with many people she thought she smiles a lot but actually she was being quite uh, caged about it. She was, she was not putting a hand over her mouth, which was a, lot, a lot of my patients will do when they first see me, but not really giving that broad, confident smile that in her own personality she certainly has. So, 10 months ago, this was you, um, and um, we worked out with Invisalign that we could move you from that, and we do the little process, and the little show goes on, and it moves you to there. Wow. Okay, so now what we've got, we've got you well aligned, um, we've got a fixed retainer at the back to hold the teeth in place because otherwise I like to drift back to where they used to be. Um, and with Invisalign, it moves the teeth into the right position, but it doesn't uh, adjust the actual shape of the teeth. Yeah. And as we know with your teeth, because they were slightly in the wrong position, the teeth were a little Just bit slightly. worn, a little bit slight. <laughs> they were worn a little bit. So um, the right lateral incisor is a little worn, and this one has got a bit of edge chipping on it. So we're going to put a little bonding on there just to redefine the shape of those teeth to make things look better for you. We're going to put a little bit of bonding on here, a little bit of bonding on there, and that'll just give a nice align to the teeth. I'm just building up the first edge of the tooth so it's the right height. So I'm just trying it out, just seeing what the colour's like. Throughout the course of my treatment, I found that a lot of friends and family would be saying, oh, let's see your pictures, what did you look like, what were your teeth like before you've been having this treatment? And I'd be looking through them and I couldn't find anything of me smiling, which I didn't realise until now, until I'm having the course of Invisalign treatments, how much it had affected me. I didn't smile in photos. So hopefully now that will change after having my treatment with Invisalign. It's only had to me. Have a look. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe how straight they are, let alone how natural they look. When you were putting that bonding on there, I was sort of semi-imagining that it would be really circular or really flat, but you've artistically kind of designed my tooth to match, it's amazing. Everything fits in and looks natural and beautiful. Wow. And you're going to have good teeth now until you're 90 years old. So what, how, how many years ahead is that? Until you're 90? A lifetime ahead. A long time, exactly. <laughs> oh, that? I can't say thank you enough. It feels like literally my face is lifted because it's all balanced now. Yeah. So I'm going to lose the pout <laughs> and gain a smile. Thank you so much. Like and the, Thank you so much. It's transformed. It, it actually will transform everything for me in my life in a way. That's where you were beginning and this is where you are now. Oh my gosh. It's, it's just amazing how that little nick does it, doesn't it? Yeah. Isn't, isn't that crazy yeah, how that, that just really does it? Does. And the way 
way that you've just sort of rounded round that little bit. Well. It's giving you a little bit. Smoother. Yeah, yeah. And more Just natural. it flows. Be careful and do research on dentists you go and see for your treatment. Um, have a look at the work they have done in the past. They should have before and after photographs of their patients if they're doing this sort of work. You might be somebody who has teeth which are in the wrong position and also aren't that pretty. And if you're that sort of patient, you'll need to have your teeth moved into a, a good position first of all, and then after that. Um, have maybe some veneers done. Uh, I would advise you to have the teeth moved first and then reassess and then decide how many, if any, veneers you need. Thanks so much Julian and thanks so much Aviva Cosmetic Dentistry in St Albans. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today, but join us next time when we'll give you more top tips to looking and feeling fab. Bye for now.